Hi guys, uh, I just thought I'd do a quick list review for my tournament this Saturday. Uh, Filthy Hobbits is a GBHL 80, um, armies of 400 points. Uh, I've got an interesting mix of, um, of lists, so I thought I'd just quickly run through it with you guys, uh, build some hype for Saturday. Uh, so let's just get straight into it. Alright, okay, so uh, let's just get straight into it. Um, so first off, got an Azox Hunter list uh, with Bolg. Obviously, Bolg is quite a beast, so there's not going to be too much of 400 points that deals with him easily. Uh, and obviously, you've got Hunter Orcs as well. Um, possibly the best costed infantry in the game. Uh, obviously, a two attack strength for eight points, which is pretty mad. Um, a lot of bows as well, because obviously they can go 50%. Um, fifty percent bows with their uh, army bonus. Um, so that could be pretty pretty nasty. Um, so someone's probably in for a bulking uh, at least once today. Uh, moving on, um, got Theodred's guard. Um, again, this one's fairly straightforward. I haven't actually got around to using this list myself. I'm just painting up some Helmingers at the moment, uh, and I don't think I've ever played against it either. But I do know that Theodrid can be pretty spicy with um with his rerolls. Um obviously the only issue is he always has to charge, I believe, if he can, which can include dismounting. So if someone's clever, they might be able to force a dismount, which would be annoying. <laughs> um but other than that you've got um you've obviously got Grimbold who um you know has potential to deal with extra wounds as well, so that's pretty pretty spicy. Um yeah, and obviously you've got the the Helminger and uh, Royal Guard Shield Wall again. So you've got the Defense Six probably in the front rank, and then um, Strength Four Spear Support behind. Uh, not to mention all the throwing spears. So um, it's uh, yeah, pretty pretty good. And twenty three models is uh, very respectable as well. So I think this one could do quite well. Uh, next, we've got a fairly straightforward Kingdom of Chaos of Doom list. Uh, Durin, who again, people are going to struggle to deal with him, I think. Um, he's very survivable, and obviously he's got um, you know, spicy axe as well. So <laughs> um, I think those Vault Warden teams could be quite handy. I suppose the only trouble is with the, um, with the low model counts, they might be easy to outflank. So I suppose it's just about making sure they're pointing in the right direction and um, holding up wherever they need to hold up. Um, yeah, nine guard are obviously no slouch either. Uh, half guard, very nasty. So it's a low model count, I think. Um, well, they got to bear in mind these are two each, so um, actually it's fourteen eight. So it's a full war band still, but um, yeah, slightly on on the lower side model wise. Uh, and then we've got Arnor. Um, so I think Arnor is probably one of the best factions out there, isn't it? Really. Um. I think obviously missing Malbeth, but I think points wise, I can see why the captain's more useful. And obviously, you've got that potential to march as well, because obviously, it's a um, infantry heavy list. So, um, you do probably need a march to get that mobility. Arva Dewey, again, at 80 points is, um, you know, not, not bad at all. He's, um, he can sort of stand up to most things, uh, apart from stuff like Bolg and Azog, which there's a few of, so that <laughs> could be interesting. Um, obviously a fair amount of shooting as well, seven bows. Um, be interesting to see how it does at 400 points, because I think I've only played at higher points where there's a lot of bows and Malbeth. So you're kind of, um, yeah, having to make choices about what, what you bring, and obviously I think it's still, still quite nasty. Um, obviously the courage could be an issue, um, but unlikely, I think. <laughs> um, the next one, I think Ash Scott's a drop, unfortunately, but um, I still put his lift up, list up here because I wasn't really thinking. Um, <laughs> but uh, obviously, Suladan's a very good hero, and obviously, getting the banner effect as well. Um, again, Serpent Riders are, are very good. Um, obviously, low low defense, and they don't get the bodyguard, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but it's nice to see an all, all evil mounted list anyway. Um, you got the mouth of Sauron, obviously, for some transfixes. I think, um, yeah, I think the the Wild Rider should be quite good as well. Um, obviously, throwing, yeah, twelve twelve throwing spears is not to be sniffed at. Um, so obviously, there's a pretty strong skirmishing capability here as well. Um, so yeah, that's, that could have been quite interesting, but unfortunately, I don't think Ash could make it. 
Uh, Charlie's abandoned bringing bears everywhere, apparently, uh, which might be for the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Dane on boar is just gross. Um, so he has the same rule as Theodred, I think, where he has to charge if he can, but I think that's after his first combat, so he can still sort of manoeuvre around with him a bit, so it's not it's not quite such a pain in the bum. Um, and again, just sort of a very solid core of um, dwarfs with shield and spear. Um, a few more crossbows than I would have thought, actually. Um, but I suppose that means that... Um, you can sort of bring bring the enemy to you and hopefully sort of counter that movement five no march um issue in terms of mobility so yeah that could be one to watch dane obviously can chop up most things so um again that's quite scary uh mr tom smith with the uh candace chariots um obviously he's got two chariots and then a bunch of horsemen then one random warrior because i imagine that's how the um the points fell um I think chariots, obviously they could be quite, um, I guess can can be quite swingy at low points, um, but equally I can definitely see them doing well. I think with the with the chariots, if you were able to get a couple of good charges off and, you know, each of them kills, you know, three or four guys, then actually that's someone's, you know, someone's army potentially broken in one turn <laughs> and, uh, you know, w without without much sort of combat having taken place. Um yeah, and obviously the the chariot's quite difficult to deal with as well because obviously they um it makes it harder to strike uh strike the rider um or the charioteer um so it can um sort of keep keep them in the game a little longer. Uh yeah, I see that being quite nasty. Uh but possibly not as nasty as this. Dale's brought um yeah, so it's survivors of Lake Town. Um so if you've got Bard, but then you've got the kids as well who up his fight value and give him free heroic combats, which is gross. You've got Alfred the Counselor who potentially gives might back, which is gross. <laughs> uh, you've got the Captain who's there presumably for the uh, for the march and to help bring another cheap warband. You've got a lot of bows. Um, so obviously the, the issue is the infantry's pretty crap, so stuff can just sort of walk through it. But... Um, I think the amount of bows and obviously Bard being massively powered up at 400 points is going to be pretty pretty nasty. Um, and we got fell beings of Mirkwood. Uh, I think it's pretty pretty standard. I think the uh, the main thing here was um, the two giant spiders. Obviously, they're quite a big cost sink at this points level. So obviously, um, you yeah, know, getting rid of one of them might have meant three or four more orcs. But yeah. I suppose there's merit in more spiders and there's merit in more numbers, so it should be interesting to see how it plays out. Obviously, you've got the you've got the bat swarm and two big hitters, especially the spider queen, and obviously giant spiders are pretty good as well. Um, obviously, all the re-rolls from the spiders as well is going to be nasty, so uh, I can see that doing quite well. The trouble is, is if you're able to just kill all the orcs and survive the onslaught of Razgush and spider queen, you can break it quite quickly, um, and courage can be an issue, but you can see that doing doing well. Um, next one's pretty standard. Goblin Town. King, Gollum, Captain, Scribe. Lots of goblins. Um, I suppose the only thing is... Um, I have seen this run without the Goblin King to just get even more numbers. So you can kind of get a list led by Grinner and then put another Captain there and loads more goblins. So there are ways of getting more numbers. Um, but I... <laughs> I think 40, 41 should be enough. So, uh, <laughs> and obviously the capacity to bring more on via the scribe as well. So if you get a scenario where you can just chill at the back, he's able to bring on reinforcements to sort of run interference with anyone trying to shut him down. So, um, yeah, it's a difficult list to deal with. You just got to kill goblins. Watch out for Gollum with the ring, having that fight value, and uh, yeah, hope you can sort of break him and get get that courage. Um, yeah, that bad courage working against them. Uh, Cameron's bringing um, Wolves of Isengard, led by Sharku, not Sharky. Um, yeah, that was my spelling. <laughs> um, yeah, just a whole bunch of wild riders um, with Captain, then a couple of wild wags. Uh, again, this can be quite difficult. I think the Legendary Legion rules are also quite handy in terms of... Um, Special rules here are quite nasty. The um, ambush and scouts special rules are quite um, quite good in terms of giving 
giving options, um, especially of Maelstrom, but also just in terms of deploying and then getting in people's faces immediately. Uh, I'm not too enamoured with the free heroic with Sharku because he's fight four, so it's like be alright against something like Lake Town, but in almost every other circumstance, like what is he combating off of? <laughs> um, but no, that's good. I mean, just Warg Riders are very good as well, and obviously there's potential to keep the Warg if the Rider dies. So um, yeah, that that could be that could be uh, difficult to deal with, especially with um, uh, with the with the mobility. Um, next one's interesting. It's just a a thrall list really with um, shield wall, the guardians, the king, front rank, and then some spears. Uh, I think the uh, iron heels, captain, and wargo is uh, a good, a good option as well, uh, just to give you a bit more mobility and hitting power. Because um, I guess the other option is just to, uh, um, yes, yeah, so I guess the other option would be just to max out on guardians of the kings really, because otherwise you'd be looking at a um, Erebor captain anyway. I think to to reach the 400 points. Uh, but again, Thrall's survivable as a leader, so that's quite good. And obviously the banner bonus, the high defense. Um, yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, breaking of the Fellowship. Our, so you got three Hunters and then Samwise. Presumably that's just how the points fell. Um, this could be pretty good, actually, because obviously they'll just... Uh, well, Sam, I guess Samwise isn't really <laughs> going to be too helpful without Frodo there, because obviously you need Frodo to power up the free hero combats from Sam. Uh, and then his legendary legion rule via the rope thing isn't that great, but equally uh, he can just sort of loiter around to provide a banner effect for your actual hitters. Uh, and obviously we know these three heroes are good. Obviously Legolas uh, sits back and shoots to begin with, and shoots leaders mounts and that sort of thing. Um, gets a few kills, and then that powers Gimli up, and then Gimli and Aragorn go into combat and like wreck everyone's good time and Legolas almost always dies, at least when I play him, but could be quite good. Um got pits of dog or do a list. Um it's not too much to say here. It's good. Um Azog gets free hero combats. Um not much can deal with Azog, so that could be spicy. I think it's just gonna be one of those um one of those things where you just target everything that's not Azog and play avoidance and try and tarp it in with something. Like if you can chuck something in and call a defence then you do and um, that's going to be difficult to deal with. Um, and you got Jamie's uh, host of the Dragon Emperor. Uh, I've never seen this at four hundred. I think the um, uh, I normally see it at six hundred and above because you then get the uh, Dragon Emperor and then something like Rutabi or a Brogue or something like that. Um, but equally. You know, fight fight five shield wall um, with access to get to the uh, fight f um, strength four as well. Um, you know, if you're able to go three deep and then a reroll, you're probably not losing very much. So I think it's very survivable. And again, the dragon emperor himself is actually. Um, I think you'd normally want him as more of a support hero uh, who then sort of charges in when the time is ripe. But I think here he'll probably have to be uh, thrown into combat quite a lot. But obviously he's he's very good in combat. So. Um, it's just the base is a bit of a pain, but I can see this being very survivable and quite um quite hard for people to figure out. Uh, got scouts, which is obviously uh, I love I love scouts at four hundred. I think Joe's run it slightly different to the way I run it. I think um I couldn't tell you how. I think um oh yeah Joe you forgot to give Grishnak a shield. What are you doing? <laughs> so he he's the only way you can get to um. Uh, defense six in the list. Everything else is defense four or five, including the heroes. Uh, but Grishnak can go to defense six with a shield. Um, Grishnak is very sneaky, and he's a good assassin because obviously he's got backstabbers, um, and obviously he can power that up with animosity as well. So he's potentially on, uh, you know, plus two to wound if you trap something. Uh, so Grishnak is actually surprisingly good. Mal here is obviously a very good troop killer. Ugluck, uh can be good, apart from when I use him and he just dies. Um, a head taker rule as well, very good. You kind of want an orc stood next to him when, when you look like you're breaking. Um, Jordan here with a whole bunch of crossbows, which is probably going to make some nerds cry. It'll probably make me cry if I had to get shot by eight crossbows. Um, <laughs> I think um, I've seen this a few times, actually. A couple of, couple of heroes. Um, and then just crossbows uh, and pikes, so you don't really 
get any Uruk Warriors with shields, and you got like one, and then you got a few spare Uruks, just presumably how the points fell. Um, but you know, getting 10 crossbow shots with Vrasku involved as well. Um, if you have to deploy right on top of the enemy, I can see it, uh, you know, falling to some other list. If you can deploy further back, I can see it just shooting the crap out of some other lists and uh, winning winning games that way. So I think it will depend on what scenarios get played, but very nasty. Uh, Jordan Randall with um, just a straight uh, Mordor list. Um, again, I think it's just uh, it's pretty pretty easy to get your head round. It's just um, you know three good medium orc heroes, a sort of medium tier. Um, so obviously Zagdush and Goroth can be killy, especially Goroth. I love Goroth. Um, it kind of makes me want to play my army of Gothmog at some point, and I love it. Um, Guris is the leader that I was a bit confused by, because I think Goroth will be a better leader, but I wonder if the idea is um, that you could be a bit more ruthless and reckless with Goroth and sort of just chuck him in and not have to worry about the leader points, whereas Guris is more of a support hero who sort of can get involved, but doesn't always. Um, although if he does end up in combat, he is still pretty good with the strength five. Uh, he's only courage three, I think, or courage. I think he's he's low courage anyway, so that's the only um, that's the only thing. So I guess some might might be getting saved for um, those courage tests when when you're broken. But um, yeah, no, it's good. You've obviously got Moranans and normal orcs in the shield wall. A couple of uh, sprinkler black Numenorians as well. So yeah, looks good. Uh, so again, slightly different variation to what Charlie's bringing. Um, so he got a couple of couple less crossbows, I think, and a few more spears, but does the same sort of thing. And the Dane squishes stuff whilst the, orc, um, the dwarves die slowly, and then um, sort of you know kill, get the kills in as well. Uh, just kind of chipping away. Uh, I think Lewis is a drop, but obviously a Thorin's company list would have been quite cool to see. Philly and Killy obviously have good synergy. Bilbo has the ring, uh, Sting's, you know, nice little bonus. Uh, Dwalin and Thorin are obviously the hitters. Uh, you know, Barlin's a good support piece, so that, that could have been quite interesting. Um, then we've got the other variation of our fell beings of Mirkwood. So we've got the so we've got another way of running the fell beings of Mirkwood. Um, so this one's more orc heavy, uh, with only one spider. I probably run it this way if it was me just to get the model count up um so you're kind of losing a spider and the bat swarm which is sad but it's also seven more models and i think the mirkwood spider maybe over the giant spider just because the, the mirkwood spider can get a paralyze off and um if he does on a key model that's just gonna be a massive pain in the ass to deal with um be interesting to see which one finishes higher so uh there's a little challenge in there uh, Omar's bringing Minas Tirith, uh, just led by LSR. Obviously, LSR's kind of gross, wounds everything on plus four. Uh, obviously, Andriel's Elven Blade, a uh, mighty hero as well. So he's probably the um, the main one who's going to be dealing with these uh, Danes and Thralls and Durins, Azogs and Bolgs. Um, obviously, uh, I still I still would be hesitant to just push him into um, Azog in case he botched the strike. But um, equally, if Azog botches the strike and yeah LSR can potentially one pump him maybe um yeah and then I think obviously you just got the um you got some bows and then some tin cans and stuff I guess the idea is this die slowly and pick stuff off LSR does most of it um then we got Ruth's um Fanghorn uh I can't remember what Beachbone's rule is uh, I always get modeled up with him and quick beam um but Ents are nasty. Their their rule is kind of hilarious as well. The um the bludgeon rule where you can pick pick up a model and then bludgeon everyone else with it. So that would be hilarious to see. Um this one might be one of those quite swingy lists where if um you know you can just win fights and you know you're probably then killing stuff and you know if you keep rolling those sixes then you're potentially winning a few games. Um I think the trouble is if they botch and they're against some of these bigger heroes, then it's uh, it's just one of those swingy lists. But I think uh, ends uh, ends quite fun. Um, so yeah, that could that could be interesting. Uh, and then we got Sam 
uh, Sam Butler's Eagles. So same sort of principle, really. Um, I think they'll be fun to use. Um, they'll do well if they roll sixes, and if they don't roll sixes, they'll probably die quite quickly. Um, but the mobility there will also help for some some some, uh, some specific scenarios. Uh, Scott Perry's bringing um, Harad and Farharad. Uh, so again, he's getting the Mahood King with shield and half troll. Uh, a little sad to not see him on his camel because I love seeing love seeing the camels. Um, but yeah, I mean it's got it's got um, got a bit of everything. Um, it's got some of the best aspects of Harad and Farharad there. Half trolls are very good. Uh, Merchant guard are good, so it's nice to put one in there. Uh, and then you got some mobility with war spears, quite low point in cavalry as well. So that's uh, that's good. Model count might be an issue, but. Um, I think equally people are going to struggle to deal with the half trolls, uh, and then I think we've got a, another um, a pits of dog do so sort of um, similar to the other ones we've seen before, the hunter orcs and everything. Um, I really like this this one, um, the Mordor theme, the Reavers of Nurnan. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool um, list there. Um, pretty cool theme even. Um, so this is the only ring wraith we're seeing. Um, and there's a bit of terror in the uh, the Morgul Knights as well, so that's a bit of synergy there. But also some magic to shut down some of these nasties, um, these big nasty heroes, and you know black dyings and mounts and stuff. So this could be um, this could be quite a handy handy list, I think, because uh, maybe accounted some of the bigger heroes that struggle with magic. Obviously, Cardo's chucking fireballs at everyone, and then sacking trackers is always hilarious to see. Uh, and obviously, twenty nine point model counts good it means that the um, army bonus might get triggered more often so that'll be good uh tom stenny bringing uh black gate opens uh, i love black gate opens uh i've not really made it work at 400 points i think i like it at 600 but then i tend to get annoyed because then you come up against ring wraith and then they just shut this guy down and then you just cry um and you can't deal with terror <laughs> but it's it's good uh i think you just need to work carefully to you know, leverage these two on one fights to get the army bonus to sort of quickly quickly get killing. Um but the mouth of Sauron and Black Gate opens troll are both very good. Um again the Black Gate opens troll can deal with a lot of stuff. Um so that's all good. Uh Tom Payne's bringing uh Rivendell. Um I think Tom loves loves a Kurdan. I think I've played I think I've only played Tom once actually, but it was um there was a Kurdan in there. Um yeah, but it's pretty uh, pretty standard. I suppose the only thing is there's no march, and Arrestor is very good. I really, really rate him, uh, especially with the Nodor and Daggers. That's very good. Uh, but he can be a bit squishy as a leader. So obviously there's some big hitters in this tournament, so I think they might see Arrestor as a bit of an easy mark. But um, obviously that's not necessarily the case, because if, um, if you get that terror bubble up... Uh, People are going to be reluctant to charge him, and then also he's got a couple of strikes he can do with Elven Blade, so um, yeah, it could be could be one to watch. Um, you obviously got sprinkling of Rivendell Knights as well, so six bows, Elf bows as well. Um, yeah, so that could be uh, could be one to watch. Could I think the only thing is Kurdan's going to be have to work very hard to not get charged because I think he's he's good at higher points when you can hide him behind stuff and sort of have a little bodyguard but I suppose here I don't know if there's the models to screen him too much so I think it's just going to be careful careful Kurdan placement <laughs> uh, Tom Rice uh, Tom, Tom's first tournament so uh, a lot of pressure to win it um, <laughs> um, so yeah it's another um, Serpent Horde and Farharad mix uh, again Suladan just very good. Obviously, the banner effects and all the rest of it means he's a good leader. Um, obviously, he's got a few Haradrim warriors supporting Merchant Guard. Um, but this is where this is where the magic happens for me. Is you got the Mahud Tribe Master on War Camel and M Five Raiders, and then a sprinkling of half trolls. Um, I was kind of hoping to see an entirely mounted raider list, but apparently Tom doesn't have. Uh, was it like fifteen you need or something? <laughs> so, um but I'm very, very happy to see that. I kinda wish that I was a king, to be honest, but I know the points 
it wouldn't it wouldn't work I don't think points wise so I think the trimaster is still a very good option with with these guys the impact hits alone can just be gross um it's like a good turn if you know they all you know if you get a kill with each of them that's you know six models and you haven't even done a combat yet so um very good uh, and then George Gibbons bringing uh, Amoria and Felpings of Mirkwood Alliance. Um, this one's quite interesting, actually. I can't, I couldn't really figure it out. So you got, so Durbers is just kind of there to facilitate the Yellow Alliance. Uh, Druzag obviously has uh, Enraged Beast and stuff like that, so that could be pretty good. Um, so obviously he's got lots of beasts to Enrage. Um, so I don't, I don't really know to be honest. I, I guess I just have to to watch it and see how it gets on. But you've got. You know, you've got a lot of tools here, but low model count, and um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's probably beyond my skill to do well with that. Uh, and now we have the god tier list. This is how everyone should submit their lists to me in future, just just so you know. Um, so you've got Tom Eves bringing Kingdom of Moria, Balin, Gimli, Bunch of Dwarves. Um, there's not too much to say about the list itself, um, other than... Um, yeah, Balin's a good mid-tier hero. Gimli's obviously a big hitter. And then get a surprising amount of dwarves in there as well. Um, obviously, mobility is an issue. But, um, if, you know, if you could get close to him and whack him on the head with an axe, then hopefully it wouldn't be a problem. Um, but, yeah, very, very fancy list submission. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, that's all the lists. Oh, the ringer list. Um, so, I... At the moment, I think we've had two drops, so I think we're on 30 players. But I'm going to bring my ringer list, uh, which is Grey Company. Um, it's basically the three hunters fully upgraded. So Aragorn and Legolas have armor. Um, I think they all get elven cloaks. Uh, Aragorn might get a bow, I can't remember. Uh, I think it comes to 190 points, but you get Andrew for free. So, um, yeah, so it'll be good for quick games, but fun games as well. And... Um, I didn't want to choose a list, I was just going to get stomped anyway, so, um, because if someone has to play me, they probably want a game of it, rather than just, like, stomping me. Uh, but yeah, that should be good. Um, cool, so I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown, and I will see you all on Saturday.